Mrs. Engel. Today, I wanted to show you what we're doing in class, which is making a model of DNA out of food products and probably things that you'll just have lying around in your kitchen and they're very um, inexpensive type things and they make a beautiful model. So if you ever wanna try this um, with uh, younger kids or anyone who's interested in DNA or science, this is kind of a fun little quick activity that you can do that really shows the structure of DNA very well. Okay, so let's see what we've got here. Um, first up on the screen, I want to just introduce you to DNA a little bit. Uh, the overall shape of DNA is called a double helix. Uh, what that means is, is that it goes in a spiral with two sides. So if it were just a single strand or a single side, um, just this part here, it would just be called a helix. But because there's two, um, it's called a double helix. And so basically it just means that there's two twists that are bonded together. Now, inside of DNA, um, if, you, if you zoom in even further, you have what's called a nucleotide. And so if we, if we zoom in, let me see if I can do that for you. We can see that these blue or teal strands on the, on the side that almost look like a railing for a spiral staircase, those are made up of phosphates and sugar. Um, our particular sugar is called deoxyribose, and that's the D in DNA is deoxyribose. Um, so it's a sugar phosphate backbone. They call it a backbone. Um, and then these very colorful, almost step looking things in the middle or rungs, if you think of it like a ladder, those are called nitrogenous bases or nitrogen containing bases. Um, there are four um, in DNA and they are adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. Um, and they are color coded in this diagram and we also will be color coding them today. Um, adenine always bonds with thymine and guanine always bonds with cytosine. So you'll see these colors in a second um, always be paired up together. All right, let's get to the fun stuff. What do we need? So what do you need to do this activity? Um, all you need are two Twizzlers. Really, as long as the Twizzlers are the same color, they don't have to be red. It's just really easy for, to find the red ones. So two Twizzlers. You need about 10 toothpicks, okay, about 10 toothpicks. You could certainly use more or you could use less. It's up to you depending on um, how crowded you want your diagram to be or your model to be. Uh, the picture I found um, here, it's got more than 10. The one I, I prefer to keep them a little more spread out so you can kind of see a little bit more. Um, it gets very crowded if you use more than 10, but you make your call. I'm gonna use 10 today. And then we need marshmallows. Little miniature marshmallows work really well. Um, I get the ones, uh, it really helps to see the, the different nitrogen containing bases when they have the four, like four different colors. So you could dye your own if you wanted. I went ahead and just bought, um, it's a, I think I just got it at Walmart. It's just a little um, great value or, you know, non-name brand. Uh, it's mini fruit marshmallows in four fun fruity colors, strawberry, lime, lemon, and orange. Um, but they just had four colors and they were the perfect size. So I just grabbed those when I was at the store. I think that entire bag cost me something like 88 cents. So you, yeah, it's very cheap to make this. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to take a Twizzler and we're going to say that this is the sugar and phosphate backbone. So if you, and you can look at the diagram right here, they have theirs where it's twisted and ours will be twisted too. But when DNA is actually pairing up, it's not twisted. Some enzymes come and untwist it into a straight ladder-like structure. Um, it basically looks something like this. Oh, there we go. It looks like that. Um, and then once it's met its match and it's paired up correctly, another enzyme comes and it builds these bonds down the middle and another enzyme comes and proofreads and then another enzyme comes and it really twists it. Um, so let's see if you can, you see that? Yeah. So we're going to be making something similar to this today. All right. So what you need in order to know the order to make it in is a sequence. 
um, I will be putting our DNA sequence that I'm going to use. Um, it'll appear in the video somewhere over here, I think, somewhere over there. Uh, and you should see it right about now. So I uh, am putting that up there and I am going to make uh, that particular strand of DNA. So the first to get us going, it's uh, T-A-C. That's the first code on, the first set of three letters, T-A-C. So T in our scenario is going to be green. I just selected it as my T color. So thymine will be represented with green. So since it's a T, you'll take your green and you'll slide it on that toothpick and you'll leave a little room at the end here. Um, so overall, your toothpick looks like this, okay? So we've already made one, so good job. All right, and then the next letter on our thing says A. So here we go. I'm gonna choose pink for A, but you choose whatever color you want. I'm gonna choose pink. So adenine is pink. So I'm gonna put this on here just the same way I did. So we've got another one, good job. All right, C, cytosine. I'm going to pick um, orange. I'm gonna pick orange for cytosine. And I'm gonna stab it right there. All right, we've got another one, yay! Okay, so we're gonna do this whole strand. Um, and in a second, I'll show you what it looks like as I make mine. But another uh, quick note that I wanna do is these don't just hang out mid air, right? So they've gotta be attached to that sugar phosphate backbone. So you're gonna take it. Here's our sugar phosphate backbone. Here's our nitrogen base. And we're gonna just poke it right through like so. All right, can you see that okay? And we're gonna do that. Our next one was an A, so there's T and then an A, and watch your fingers. Sometimes you can poke your fingers right here. Be careful. And then C, T-A-C. So here's the beginnings of our model and our DNA strand. So T-A-C, so thymine, adenine, and uh, cytosine right here. But these, these are not alone. They come in, in, in pairs, right? So thymine, the green one, always likes to bond with adenine. So we'll take a pink and it's adenine. So we will slide it on the other side like this. And here's an A, A always goes with T. So we'll take our green one, our thymine, and we'll slide it on like this, okay? Cytosine is our orange. It always bonds with something called guanine, which is yellow. So we'll take a yellow marshmallow and we will slide it on like that. Okay, so once you have your entire strand finished, which I'll show you in just a second, you will take your other sugar phosphate backbone and you, like we did right before the first time, you will slide it onto the edges of those toothpicks over there. And you will start to have your ladder take shape. Now you don't wanna put on this second sugar phosphate backbone until you've paired up each of your um, nitrogenous bases um, because otherwise room gets very scarce trying to move these around. But in the end, you'll have a finished ladder that looks something like this. And then if you twist it, you'll have a double helix just like that. Um, now sometimes people ask me, uh, Mrs. Ingle, what do the toothpicks represent? Why is it just to hold on the nitrogen bases or, or are they important? They're absolutely important. In fact, one of the most important parts, these toothpicks represent the hydrogen bonds that keep our nitrogen bases together. And it's a big deal. Hydrogen bonds are considered a weak bond. However, um, it's, they're, designed or, or they're structured in a way that they can be um, split apart pretty easily and then rematched up very easily. Now, why would we want something like that? Why would we want our DNA to be able to be split apart and rematched up? Well, every time you get a new cell, which is very frequently uh, inside the nucleus of your cell, you also need DNA for it. And so you have to make new DNA. And so what your cells 
do, and this is why this one has two different colors, what your cells do is they take your original strand and an enzyme comes and unzips it. And it unzips it and snaps these bonds right here, okay? So we break those bonds just like that, okay? Oop, that one's stuck. We, oops, I lost one. We break these bonds and then what will happen is, is you will have a new sugar phosphate backbone, okay? And then you will also have new nitrogen base uh, pairs. And so what will happen is, and much like I did in this one, you have new nitrogen bases coming to meet your old one. You have a new sugar phosphate backbone coming to meet your old one. And you will end up with two of these, right? Because this strand ripped apart as well. And so it will get its own new as well. And they will pair up and all of your DNA works this way. So in your whole body, you have over 1 trillion cells. That's a ton but your DNA is even smaller. If you took your DNA and laid it out end to end, crazy. That's crazy how much DNA you have in your body. So half of every strand of DNA is old or original, and half of every strand of DNA is new. And we keep using that because this is our template. So we use this as a template and we pair it up with new DNA. The same, the same match it had before, right? It had a pink match before, an adenine before and it has a pink match now. It's just always allowing your DNA to replicate and half be new and half be old. So you will always have DNA like this. Um, so anyway, why is it twisted? Why does your DNA have a helix or double helix type structure? Well, if you leave it like this, it takes up a lot of room. And as we know, we have around 23,000 genes in our body and far more nitrogen bases than that. And so basically inside your nucleus is a very small space that has to be full of a ton of very important information. And so when we twist it, look at how much room we save. Ready? We go from this to this. And all of a sudden we have the same amount of information. You can even go further and you can smash it down to this if you really wanted to. You could condense this really, really small and then you can unwind it as well. So it really is a perfect example for our DNA. Our DNA spirals to save space. It can condense a lot of information into a much smaller space. And if you have curly hair and you're watching this, then you already know this, right? Um, curly hair is already coiled in a helix. It's already spiraled. And so if you ever, if you have curly hair and you ever straighten your hair or brush it or blow dry it straight, you will see how much longer your hair appears to be because when it curls, it takes the same amount of hair and makes it condense and take up less vertical space, okay? Same thing is true with DNA. When it curls, when it spirals, it takes up a lot less vertical space. And so that's what we need in order to exist in our cells, okay? All right, well, I'll um, insert some pics and clips of me uh, with some finished products. And I hope you do this. I hope you really enjoy this model. Uh, the kids really liked eating them when they were finished. They wanted to show their uh, friends and their parents and all that, but they also wanted to eat it. So it's a very fun, easy treat. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Mrs. Engel, out.